Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 24 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about saving images from Python. So in the last couple of tutorials, we looked at how to read standard images like JPEGs and PNGs and how also to read proprietary images or special type of images like TIFF and .CZIs. So once you import these images, you're going to, for example, extract the relevant channels like I showed in the previous tutorial and then perform certain operations. And finally, you would like to save them back to your hard drive. So this tutorial is intended to show you the process of saving these images from Python onto your hard drive. And again, the two primary libraries that we'll be focusing on would be scikit-image and OpenCV. And I'll also show you how to save images using PyPlot which is primarily used for plotting purposes and also using TIFF file, which is designed to handle TIFF files as the name suggests. So let's jump on to Spider and uh, start looking at uh, the few ways to save uh, these images. So uh, as usual, I've uh, written, pre-written the code so we save time by not typing it. So let's go ahead and start by reading an image. And this is something we have learned again a couple of uh, tutorials ago, how to read standard images. So from scikit image, again, I'm using scikit image to read this image and I'm reading it without uh, having adding as gray equals to true or false, which means it's actually read in as, uh, uh, as a NumPy array that is unsigned integer eight and here are the dimensions. And the three stands for again, red, green, and blue. And please remember that scikit image reads images as red, green, blue in this order. OpenCV reads images as blue, green, red. So when you're saving, you need to be a bit careful and I'll uh, actually demonstrate that process in a minute. Okay, so once the image is available, well, I keep referring to this as image, but when I say image, this is basically a NumPy array. In this case, it has 1104 times 1376 times three, these many values, and the values range between zero to 255 because this is an unsigned integer eight. So now let's actually apply some sort of a, a processing. So I used this example a couple of times before, and I'm going to uh, dedicate at least a couple of tutorials on how to do various things, you know, various apply various filters using scikit image. But for now, let's only focus on Gaussian. So within scikit image package, uh, there is a sub package or sub library called filters. And within filters, there is a function called Gaussian. So this is what we are applying on our input array or our image, okay? So just to explain this, within filters, you have Gaussian and we are applying it on this array, which is 1104 by 1376 by three with this setting. Let's actually change our sigma to three so we can see that the image is blurred visibly. Okay, so once you apply this, let's go ahead and run it these lines of code right here. Now, if you look up here, the Gaussian image, the output image that I'm assigned to the variable Gaussian underscore image is a floating point number. The size should be the same. The number of pixels is the same. It's 1104, 1376 by three, but the type of it changed from unsigned integer to floating. Why is that relevant? It's relevant when it comes to saving these images. So if you look at the numbers, for floating 64, they're all between zero to one. But for unsigned integer, the values are between zero to 255. Any standard imaging uh, or image uh, uh, handling software understands RGB images easily. It knows what the values between zero to 255 are, but they struggle to uh, interpret uh, floating point images. So we may have to convert them. But first, let's actually have a look at how to convert this or how to save this image using scikit image. So the first way is let's actually save it as JPEG. And uh, let's save it under the folder images. So we can have a quick look at, in fact, let's remove these. In fact, let's actually save it under images slash exported so we can actually look at a clean folder. Okay, so uh, the way you save images is io.imsave, just like io.imread, io.imsave. And the first one within quotations is the name of the image with the path. So since my Python file is uh, in a specific folder, within from that folder, 
I am navigating into a folder called exported, so which is under images and exported, and now I'm given the file a name with an extension. Based on the extension, the scikit image library automatically picks the right plugin in the back end to convert that into JPEG. And this is the array I'm trying to save as an image. So Gaussian underscore image, this floating 64 image or array is the one I'm trying to save as JPEG. So let's go ahead and run this. And when I open, there should be uh, a file in this folder, .jpg, and there you go. It looks blurred, the colors look fine, everything is fine. That's because here in the back end, scikit image is doing the job of converting the image from uh, floating point 64 to unsigned integer eight. So you don't have to do anything when it comes to saving images as JPEG, but it is always, you, uh, let's actually save this as TIFF. Let's save this as TIFF. In the back end, it's using TIFF file to convert images to TIFF. So when I run this, everything worked fine, should work fine. And if I open, I see a TIFF file. But when I open this, it says Windows Photo Viewer can't open this picture because it appears to be damaged or corrupted or something. But in reality, the values are all floating and it doesn't know what to do with that image or how to open that image. So in this case, it's actually a, a good idea. Uh, did I do it anywhere here? I think, uh, yeah, let me copy these two lines and I'll explain. I'll explain what I'm doing here in a second. So now what I'm trying to do is from scikit image, I'm going to import image as ubyte. Again, I covered this topic in at least one of my previous tutorials. So image as ubyte converts any other format into an 8-bit format. Similarly, image as float converts a integer image into a floating point image. So you can convert numbers from one to the other. And the good thing with using image as ubyte is it not just converts the images into integers, but it also scales the images into the right numbers. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, converting 0 0.04 into an integer the normal way would convert that to zero. In which case, all of my numbers would be zero in the image. But by using image as ubyte, it converts it and scales it to the right values between 0 to 255. So let's uh, uh, go ahead and do that onto our Gaussian image, right? This, which is nothing but our NumPy array with floating point numbers. And I'm applying this image as ubyte onto this NumPy array and saving it into a new NumPy array called Gaussian image 8-bit. So this is, let's run these lines and look at the output. Okay, so up here, again in the variable explorer, you can see now I have Gaussian image 8-bit, which is an unsigned integer 8. And if you look at the values, they have meaning now, right? They're not just all zeros. They are 11, 76, 59, and so on, which means these are real pixel values. So now our image is ready to be saved. So let's actually do exactly the same. Let's actually cut that line, paste it over here. And instead of Gaussian image, let's actually save 8-bit, okay? So the uh, again, Gaussian underscore image is NumPy array with floating point numbers, and Gaussian underscore image underscore 8-bit is the one we just converted to 8-bit, okay? So now this image should make some sense. So if I go back and open this file, now it means something. And you can see that this is blurred and it looks exactly the same as the JPEG image that we actually saved, except this is, you can see from the file size, the JPEG image was 71 kilobytes and my TIFF image is 4.4 megabytes. So uh, the image is correctly saved as TIFF. Again, in the backend, it's using TIFF file library. Okay, so now let's actually look at OpenCV. So let's separate this a little bit so we can, the code looks a bit clean. So. OpenCV, again, the way you save images is cv2.imwrite, okay? cv2.imwrite, it's not imsave. So op uh, scikit image uses imsave and cv2 uses imwrite and everything else is the same. So I'm going to save using, uh, I mean, uh, this is the file name and again, let's actually save into the same folder. So it's easy for us to look at it. And then I'm saving Gaussian underscore image. And this is our floating point image. This is not the 8-bit. I'm doing this just to see what happens when we do it, okay? So let's go ahead and run it. It should successfully save 
this new image opencv.jpg but when you open it you should see all dark pixels that's because when opencv is converting this image it's just it's just uh, converting all the values to zeros and you just see a dark image. It's not rescaling it to between zero to 255. That's why it's very important to convert your image beforehand to an 8-bit image. So anytime you save your image, please convert that to 8-bit, whether you don't even think about whether it is JPEG or you're using a scikit image or not. So now that we are converting this 8-bit image as uh, or saving that as JPEG, this line should execute and the image also should have uh, some meaning to it. Now, you may notice that all your, if I go back to the previous image, how do I go back? Uh, if I open this uh, other image over here, you can see that it's, uh, it's blue and I thought I had a TIFF image here. Let's actually go back. Uh, Yes, uh, saved using scikit image. You see that the nuclei show up in blue and this red region uh, and then the green area. You can see these three distinctly, right? So uh, now if I open my TIFF, uh, sorry, if I open my OpenCV image here, now this, ima this, this, this blue part or the nuclei part is showing up in yellow and the red part is showing up in blue. Again, you probably guessed it right. This is because OpenCV handles uh, these NumPy arrays as BGR and not as RGB. That's the reason why the colors are all mixed. Now, if you really want your colors to be correct, uh, if you think your colors has, uh, it, it's got some meaning to it, then you can actually rotate this RGB into BGR or BGR into RGB. And the way you do that in uh, uh, OpenCV, again, is by using this command here. So I'm going to use CVT color, which is available as part of OpenCV, which is CV2. And I'm going to convert this array, the 8-bit array. Okay, I've already converted that to 8-bit. I'm going to convert that from BGR into RGB. So all it's doing in the back end is moving the B from you know R space to the B space and so on, and it's getting it into the right uh, uh, you know right order. And then now I'll actually save that new image, right? Underscore RGB, this new array. So let's go ahead and execute this. Now you have a new line up here, and you can see that Gaussian image 8-bit RGB. You have this red and blue swapped, okay? The 11 moved to this spot, 59 moved to this spot. That's all we are trying to do. And let's go ahead and save that array as an image. And that's what this line actually does, cv2.imwrite. And now if I open this image, hopefully that should look the right, oh, sorry. Um, exported, saved using, goes, oh, sorry, 8-bit. I was looking why the colors are messed up. And again, uh, please, pay close attention so I need to save not the 8-bit image but the RGB image that we just uh, uh, saved. So let's run this line one more time and uh, now the color should be appropriate. Okay so uh, just for the sake of completeness let me just show you the two ways of uh, two other ways of actually saving these images the one other way is using pyplot and pyplot again uh, part of matplotlib is primarily used for plotting purposes so to save your 2d plots or histograms and so on you can go ahead and use plt.msave but uh, since it's already there uh, i'm just showing you how to properly save it uh, you know using this library so here you go and let's go ahead and uh, save execute these lines again it's plt.msave and we should have a pyplot image and this should look very similar to other images and uh, one other way which is a tiff file again we already used that functionality as part of scikit image uh, but uh, why not just see it in its native form. So let's go ahead and paste this again. In the previous tutorial, we pip installed tiff file. If not, go ahead and do that. It's just pip install tiff file. And once you have it, you can uh, open images. And in this example, I'm showing you tiff file dot imwrite. Okay. And then give a name. Again, let me go ahead and copy and paste this path. So they're all saved at the same location. And 
the array that we are trying to save is Gaussian image 8-bit, okay? And again, this is just a TIFF file, has no issue with BGR, RGB, and all that kind of stuff. So um, we can go ahead and save this 8-bit, but you have to convert images to 8-bit. Otherwise, your images will look weird if you just save the floating point image. So let's go ahead and save this, and this should also look decent over there. Okay, so with this video, I hope you learned at least four different ways of saving your images after you process them uh, in Python. The primary way that I recommend is using scikit-image and OpenCV is also a, a fine. And please be aware of floating point numbers and RGB to BGR when you work with uh, the OpenCV library. So in the next tutorial, let's actually look at how to visualize these images instead of opening it externally using Windows, you know, saving the images and opening it in, uh, you know, some sort of a Windows or Mac or whatever uh, operating system you use, you know, the default software. How can we get a quick snapshot of images while we are coding so we can modify the code accordingly? So let's cover that topic in the next tutorial. Thank you very much.